Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're back with human geography. Okay, and today we're going to be covering part 4, okay, on hydropower. Okay, so hydropower is extremely, extremely important alternative energy source you need to know, okay, for your um, geography exam, okay, because this question alone can come out in itself, okay, for 20 marks, right? So it's a very important question you need to, uh, a very important part of your syllabus you need to make sure you understand fully. Um, and it's usually used in your um, as a test question in, in team 2 2 point no sorry team 3 3.1 3 okay okay let's jump right in okay so what exactly is hydropower to begin with okay hydropower is basically a renewable energy source whereby power is actually derived from what okay it is derived from moving water okay flowing from higher to lower if there are elevations okay this one you don't have to know the higher to lower is not very important lah. okay but essentially it is basically a renewable energy source of that is derived from moving water and it's usually employed on a localized scale okay so this is the first key factor you need to remember okay hydropower usually activates on a lo on a localized scale why okay because for example look to, your, to the left of you or look outside your window okay is there a huge ocean that is right outside there for or let's say a huge river a huge lake okay whereby hydropower can be exploited on no in fact usually no okay Usually hydropower has to be used on a localized scale. Okay, it's on a very small scale whereby a river is present, whereby there is moving water that is actually present. That is when you can actually generate electricity. Okay, so the first thing you need to look at okay, will be your environmental and social impacts. This is extremely, extremely important. Okay. Take a while to just read through this first, okay? The first thing you need to look at, okay, would be your environmental impacts, okay. Over here, I've highlighted lack of resources and a decline in water quality, okay. When you actually create a dam, okay, there will definitely be a lack of resources. Why? The creation of dam will require you to, for example, to get rid of a forest, right? You need to make space in order for the infrastructure for the dam to be constructed. As a result, this will definitely result in a localized, okay, remember we're talking about localized scale, huh? localized region of um, resources which is actually reduced as a result. Okay, and not just that, okay, there is also going to be a decline in water quality. Why? When the dam is actually being built, okay, there's going to be a lot of sediments that is released, no doubt. Okay, because you're constructing a dam in the river, there's going to be a lot of construction, a lot of concrete. Okay, all this will actually um, contribute to this, this concept, like, you need to know as well. It's called sedimentation in the river. Okay, by a huge load of sediments actually being released into the river, Okay, and also there will be some algae blooms which may take place when your nutrients are actually trapped. Okay, remember this first. Huh? So examples that I will give you over here, okay, will be Brazil, as well as your Nam Chun Dam, or Nam Chuan Dam, okay, in Thailand. Okay, these are cases whereby there was a lack of resources and a decline in your water quality. Okay, looking at the social aspect of things, okay, you notice that there will be a huge loss of cultural heritage. Why? When I make space oops sorry okay when i actually make space for a river okay for i'm sorry, for a reservoir for a dam okay if there's a village next door i'm gonna have to evict the village right i'm gonna have to get rid of that community that stays there i'm basically getting rid of their home okay no doubt there will be a social impact as a result okay because um this relocation of communities will actually May, may be required sometime, okay, to actually construct the dam in the most optimal um, location possible. And not just that, okay, there will also be negative health impacts. Why? Because water empowerment may actually result in waterborne diseases, okay, when the dam is constructed, some water may be trapped, okay, your nutrients will be trapped. When there's water clogging, this may actually breed, okay, mosquitoes, or it may breed other waterborne diseases such as malaria. Okay, so in this case, the example I gave would be the Artillery Dam. Just go and take note of it. Go and search up and um, study more on it. Okay, next thing, okay, will be other impacts, okay, your biological, okay, your marine life, okay. We are looking at things um, such as your, your lake fishes, okay, your marine life that's found in the river. Okay, when there's actually this dam constructed, okay, there'll be the in, in, impediment, um, this impediment whereby your nutrients cannot flow. Okay, as a result, your fish and all may actually die, okay, as well. Don't forget, when you're constructing the river, sedimentation, okay, huge amount of sediments will actually result in choking of fishes. This will actually cause the fishes to die as well. 
okay, so there will be a loss in such marine life, which is kind of sad. Okay, looking at the economic impacts, okay, economic impacts, I won't go through very brief. I, I mean, I'm just going to go through very briefly, okay, because it's super simple. Okay, economic, you're always looking at money, right? So when you look at economic impacts, basically there's going to be a high cost of the dam creation, as well as high cost to actually manage it. Okay, and when there's sedimentation in the river, you may also have to dredge the river. This will also cause a huge, huge, huge cost for the environment that is in charge of that dam. Okay, physical impacts, very simple. You're going to have adverse effects on your local water table or groundwater condition. Okay, because when you actually construct a dam, what actually happens okay, is that um, with, with you know the huge amount of water and everything, okay, as well as sedimentation, okay, what actually happens is that percolation may not be able to function. As a result, this will cause the groundwater level to actually drop. Okay, so you need to be linked back to your Team 1 staff as well. Go and remember all those. Okay, these um, could actually have a physical impact on the dam area itself. Okay, one more thing is would be adverse effects on local climate. Okay, with the creation of a dam, okay, there may actually be huge fluctuations in the river in the short run. Okay, the reason why is because with the creation of the dam, there is suddenly a huge water body and this will actually cause evaporation to increase, condensation in the air to increase, and this will result in greater convectional rainfall. Okay, so just take note, one of it could be Lake Volta. Okay, this actually happened before, whereby there was a huge, 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 huge spike in the um, climograph, okay, as a result of the dam creation. Okay, political impacts. Okay, we're basically kind of like gone through this already, but first thing you're going to look at is public participation. Sorry about that. It's public participation, okay? Why? Like we said before, when you relocate the settlements, when you relocate towns, okay, you're basically getting at their home. People are not going to be happy, that's for sure. Okay, so this will definitely affect um, the public participation rate. One more thing will be transboundary conflicts. Link it back to your team too, uh, the last part, right? Okay, transboundary conflicts will happen because why? When you construct a dam, okay, let's say it's from a higher to lower region, the water quality will be affected, right? Because Heading down the river, you know, there'll be more sediments and everything. The water won't be as good as the top. And this could also be a result of the of the, of the of the dam that you created because you're trapping all the nutrients from actually going through. So in that case, this may actually result in transboundary conflicts whereby countries at a lower elevation, lower cost, may not be very, very happy. So take note of these transboundary conflicts that may occur as well. Okay, so moving on to exam requirements. What's actually required for your exams? You need to understand the different economic, social, environmental, and political impacts of hydropower. Okay, and you need to weigh them as well. Okay, personally, I feel environmental impacts is the most important. Okay, because it can actually result in further social or further economic impacts when people are not happy, they want to save the environment, all these kind of things. Okay, as well as you may actually require more money to resolve any sort of environmental impact that you have already created as a result of the dam construction. Okay, usually these kind of questions will ask you to compare between hydropower as well as nuclear uh, energy or biofuel. So just take note of that part. Okay, synoptic link, I can think of it would be to sit, uh, link it to, to like what I said before. Uh, link it to your transboundary conflicts, which is your team 2, 2.2. Okay, so you can link it to transboundary conflict as a good synoptic link. Okay, and this will definitely help you to score better marks. Okay, so if not, that's actually all I have okay, for this video. Hydropower is very simple. I went through it quite briefly okay, because hydropower should be driven more on your case studies. So go and learn more on the case studies okay, and then all of these should just um, fall in place very, very nicely. Okay, so if not, be sure to subscribe okay, so that you stay tuned for the next few videos that I'll be uploading. Okay, and if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, um, make sure you go and study um, geography hard okay, because it's not an easy subject to master, um, but I'll be here to help wherever I can. Okay, if not, um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.